Hello, Eastridge Chapel class. Um, ordinarily, we begin class by asking if anybody has any announcements, um, and then we kind of get into it. And so I don't want to break tradition. I don't want to be the guy that stopped asking that question. So I'll pause for a second to see if we have any announcements. No? All right, in that case, let's dive in. Um, look, I, this is not ideal. Uh, meeting this way and, and delivering content to you guys this way is certainly not what I would have wanted. And it's not, um, I think, the ideal way to do this. I miss you. Uh, I miss physically being able to see your eyes. I miss um, being able to, to give a lot of side hugs on Sunday morning. Um, I miss being able to see you and ask about your lives and ask about your families and your kids. Um, and I miss being able to share uh, the interaction that we tend to have on a Sunday morning. But we are going to do the best we can. Um, we don't know at the moment exactly what the next few weeks at Eastridge are going to look like, but we do know that like every other church, um, we're trying to limit the amount of time that we have people in close proximity. Um, as a result of that, I don't know when our Sunday morning classes will be back up and running, hopefully very soon. Um, but on the off chance that it's longer uh, rather than shorter, um, I don't want to miss the momentum we had. Uh, I love our Sunday morning chapel class, and I hope um, you love it as well. Uh, a bunch of you keep coming back, so I assume that we're doing something right. Uh, what I wanted to do, though, is over the course of the next few weeks, I wanted to continue to provide the kind of content and the kind of, of um, conversational points that I think uh, will be of benefit to you over these next few weeks. I, I thought about, about taking our content and moving it in the direction of specifically, you know, this moment in time type content. But I honestly decided not to do that. What we're going to do, we're going to fire ahead with what we had planned to do. So Ken and I just finished up a marriage series. If you were there, we spent eight weeks uh, exploring and taking a deep dive on marriage content. Um, we are going to move out of that. The plan was to move into a series called Face to Face. Uh, which was an exploration of face-to-face -face encounters with Jesus in the Gospels. And what we as you know, American people in 2020 can take out of those interactions and apply to our daily walk. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to just continue to do what we were going to do. Uh, the content's going to be a little different just because it's video and I'm going to keep it a little shorter than I would on a standard Sunday morning. Uh, but I don't want you to feel... If you've been attending that chapel class, I don't want you to feel like that class is being taken away from you or that there's an expectation that you just not get the kind of content that we would do on a Sunday morning. So um, welcome to class. Uh, let's get started. Um, clinically, one of the things that I deal with more than anything else, um, if you had to categorize all of the different reasons that people come into a counselor's office, the biggest one, probably more than anything else, is change. Now, specifically what that looks like is unique to each person, it's unique to each family, but it's change. Dealing with change. Um, change is hard. Uh, in the moment, change can feel really overwhelming. Uh, now, given the benefit of hindsight, once change um, has its, its moment and once we've embraced the change, uh, we can often see the growth and the value and the renewal that comes from certain types of change. Uh, this moment, in our culture is very scary because it's very new. And for the record, I think that's true of the virus that we're dealing with as well. It's very new and so it's very scary. However, we have faith in this moment that God is in control. So we don't wanna wait for hindsight to show us how this moment was beneficial. Uh, we wanna start looking now, in this moment immediately. Uh, we wanna start looking at the benefits of the moment we're in. For some of you, you've been given the gift of unplugging from the real world for a bit. Uh, you've been given the gift of, of refocusing your priorities on what really matters. Um, you've been given the ability to, maybe for the first time, your family's been moving so quickly and you've been moving so quickly uh, that maybe for the first time, you've got a chance to take a deep breath and to remember what really matters. Um, I'm going to keep saying this. I've said it in a couple of different platforms already, but I'm going to keep saying it as often as I can. I am hopeful that some of our families walk out of this moment where we're having to hunker down. 
I'm hopeful that they can walk out of this moment with a reminder that their kids' extracurricular activities aren't as important as we've made them to be. Uh, with the, the, the knowledge that some of the things that we just cloud our schedule with, our families feel so overburdened. And I'm hopeful that in this moment of social distancing and in this moment of taking a break from some of those things, uh, I'm hopeful that we refocus on what truly, truly matters. And to that end, I, I want to speak to the chapel class specifically this morning. Um, and I want us to not disconnect. Uh, I want you to know I'm going to be here with you together on this journey. Uh, we're going to travel this road as God's people. Um, again, we're going to be looking at face-to-face -face encounters uh, with Jesus. Um, I had planned, just so you're aware, I had planned my first class was going to be Jesus being rejected in his hometown. That was my first one. That's, that's what I was going to roll out of the gate with. Um, I did change course just a little because of the current culture that we're living in. So we're not going to be looking at that yet. Now we're going to get to that. But where I'm going to start this series is actually in John chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 26. So Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at a well. Uh, that's going to be our introductory conversation. Um, and I think you'll see as we get into this conversation why we chose it. So if you've already got your Bible handy, um, great. You're going to use it. You're going to need it. If you don't, uh, pause me. Push pause on whatever you're watching and go get it. Because uh, we're going to begin this exploration and looking at John 4. Uh, but we're actually going to begin our look at John 4 by reading two verses from Luke 3. Uh, these two verses kind of set the stage for why Jesus is where he is in John 4. So I'm going to start with Luke chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Uh, so John the Baptist has been imprisoned, and Jesus learns that the Pharisees are well informed of what Jesus is doing. Uh, Luke's account makes clear, and Matthew's account uh, makes clear, that this is the primary reason that Jesus and his disciples had decided to leave Judea and head to Galilee, because John's imprisonment. So now we're going to move on to John chapter 4. So if you're reading with me, I'm going to begin reading in John chapter 4, verse 1. I'm reading from the ESV. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although the, he himself did not baptize but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. Verse 7. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. I want to go ahead and pause here. The Samaritan woman here is certainly representative of the culture in which she resides. Jews have no dealings with Samaritans, and her response to Jesus' request makes it clear that she expects that that norm is going to be true here as well. Uh, but I also think, in addition to her being representative of the culture that she lives in, I think she's also representative of our modern culture as well. Now, we've made leaps and bounds in terms of breaking down race and ethnic barriers over the last hundred years. Um, and that was essential to our culture and essential uh, to our humanity. But we're still very human. And we still tend to divide people into groups. And then we decide which group we belong to. And we feel like we need to guard ourselves against everybody who's not in that group. Um, that idea, I don't think, is exclusive to this woman in the culture that she resides in. I think this idea that we need to cloister ourselves against every group that's not our group is something that we still struggle with. Uh, today, it's not Jews and Samaritans as it was for this woman. Uh, today, those words look a lot different and what the tribes are look a lot different. Today, it's Republicans and Democrats. Uh, it's liberals and conservatives. 
It's homeschoolers and public schoolers. It's Cowboys fans and Eagles fans. It's boomers and Gen Z or millennials. It's young marrieds and empty nesters. It's people who have toilet paper and people who can't find toilet paper. For the record, if you are watching this when it was released, it is March 20th, 2020, and we are in the midst of coronavirus lockdown. And for some reason, that resulted in a shortage of toilet paper. I'm not 100% sure why that is, but it resulted in a shortage of toilet paper. If you're watching this later and you don't realize what culture we're in, uh, it probably sounded really weird what I just said. But yes, some of the groups that we divide ourselves into um, are damaging and be, be, can be problematic. I still think we divide ourselves into those groups. We look for people who aren't in our tribe and we look at them with a great degree of skepticism. We still find fault with others. Uh, right now, in this moment of fear in our culture, it is very easy to find yourself hunkering down with your tribe and then battling everyone else. I don't think that's healthy. I don't think the idea that these tribes can't intermingle is a healthy idea. Um, I think the idea of putting ourselves in, in these groups that, that have to do battle with other groups or groups that have to be skeptical of other groups, I think can be damaging in this moment. So what we want to look to is how Jesus responded in this moment. Uh, again, we're in John chapter 4. I'm going to move on to verse 10. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Jesus doesn't entertain this woman's natural mindset towards division. What he tells her is, if you knew what I had to offer, you'd see past your division mindset and you'd see that what I offer is for everyone and that I'm offering so much more than physical comfort. Jesus came to save us all. His message is for everyone. He loves you, Republican, but he loves your Democrat neighbor too. He loves you, Millennial. He loves you, Gen Z, but he loves your boomer grandparents. He loves you, toilet paper hoarders, although your neighbors are probably really struggling with that right now. Uh, but he also loves those of you who are hoping that nobody sees you out in the yard looking for the, the big leaves because you don't want to be judged for that choice. In this moment, I know you've been asked to keep a physical distance between you and your neighbor. Um, I know that culturally we're in a weird place. I'm doing this video. Um, I can't be there with you in person because uh, our government and our culture has asked me to keep a safe distance from you and you from me. Uh, but I want you to remember, you've been mandated to keep a physical distance from your neighbor. You've not been mandated to keep an emotional distance from your neighbor. It is tempting in these moments where, where we feel stressed and we feel um, the weight of the world on our shoulders. It's tempting to turn on each other when we're in close quarters. And I want you to fight that temptation today. The message of Jesus breaks through division. And I want to encourage you to try to do the same. Let's go back to John 4. We're going to move on to verse 11. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. So this woman now does the most human thing imaginable. She begins to point out to Jesus all of the human reasons that he can't do what he says he's going to do. She limits God's power to things that are understandable to the human mind. You have nothing to draw water with. The well is deep. Where are you going to get this water? Then she criticizes him for claiming that he's this powerful in the first place. Are you greater than our father Jacob? This woman is human. She has no idea what she's saying in her mind. These dots don't connect. Uh, Jesus must at best be misguided, or at worst, he's arrogant and he's lying. Folks, just because we can't connect the dots in a way that makes sense to our human brains doesn't mean that God isn't working today exactly as he desires. Life is hard. It's big and it's confusing. God says he can offer us rest, but then if we don't see the fluffy bed, 
we believe he's mistaken. God tells us to put our faith in him, our hope, our trust. But if we can't see the road with our human eyes, we have a very hard time believing him. That's a mistake that we make as humans. We hold God to our human standards of what we can see and what we can understand. If we don't see the ladle, there must not be a way to get the water. So the question we have to ask is, how does Jesus respond to this woman when she makes this very human mistake? I think we see the answer to that moving in verse 13. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus tells her, focus on earthly things that make sense to your human eyes and you will never be satisfied. Focus on me and you'll have everything you will ever need. If we focus on our comforts, our earthly human tendencies, we may satisfy a few, but we will always thirst again. Once the gospel of Jesus is planted firmly inside of us, it creates a spring of flowing water welling up to eternal life. I know our world is really weird right now. Um, I know that there are physical comforts that we need to tend to. I get that. I, I'm sensitive to that. I really do understand it. You may be nervous. I understand that too. But do everything in your power to avoid letting your fears put Jesus into a human box. The woman at the well questioned Jesus because she couldn't see with her own human eyes that he was able to do what he said that he could do. She says, you can't give me water. You don't even have a ladle. Jesus tells her, you've got this all wrong. You're focused on earthly concerns and I'm offering you spiritual peace. My East Ridge family, I love you. I worry about you. My heart breaks for and with you in this moment. And like you, I'm focused on some earthly concerns. I believe that God put me at Eastridge to help point you towards the water. And right now, I don't see a ladle and it's stressing me out. I'm having to communicate with you through video because I can't see you in person. And that stresses me out. So I'm going to try to remember that I'm thinking about earthly concerns while Jesus is offering me and you spiritual peace. I want you to, to do the same this morning. Fight the urge to divide into groups uh, that, are, that are homogenous and dangerous and then wage war against everybody who doesn't fit into your group. Fight the urge to believe that if you can't see the ladle, the water must be unreachable. God is beyond our division, and he's bigger than our human, ladleless eyes. And when we can recognize that we don't have to be able to connect the dots in order for God to be God, um, I believe it can give us a sense of peace and a sense of calm that right now is so important for us to be able to maintain. Uh, I don't want you to feel disconnected during this time. And so East Ridge family, I'm going to Try my best to, to be as present with you as I can be, and this is about the best I can do in this moment, but I do want you to be aware of what that's going to look like in the next few weeks. Um, I'm going to try to do this at least every Sunday um, so that you can be getting some of the family life class content, or excuse me, the, the chapel class content um, that you would be normally getting on Sunday morning. So uh, be checking your email. I'm going to be sending links to this as soon as they're ready. Um, Wednesday nights, uh, those of you who have been participating in the family life class on Wednesday nights, uh, which I know is actually a lot of you, uh, those who've been participating in that class, that class is not really going away. Um, we're moving to a teleconferencing model. I'm going to be using an app in my laptop and we're going to be doing class in kind of a teleconferencing mode. Uh, if you would like to be a part of that group and are, uh, have not seen how to do that yet, shoot me an email. Uh, my email address is on the church website, and I'll be happy to get you connected to that group. In addition to that, um, I am always here uh, if you need something. You can call me, uh, you can email me, and I'll do everything I can to be sure that we're connected with you. Um, we're going to be doing as a ministry staff every week. You're going to be getting a podcast um, of us as ministers kind of talking through some of the things that we're experiencing right now. Um, and then finally, there's a Family Life podcast that we got all this stuff for. 
um, that we had been planning for a while. We've changed gears a little as to what we're going to focus on, but be looking for that uh, here in the next few days and few weeks. Um, East Ridge family, I love you dearly. Uh, I mean what I said. It breaks my heart that I can't see you. Um, but uh, I look forward to the day that I can. I know that day is coming. I know that day is coming soon. Uh, and when we can be together again, again in the very near future, um, I look forward to seeing your smiling, smiling faces and hearing all of your war stories over the course of the last few weeks and months. Um, be good to each other. Be very gracious with the people in your house right now. Um, there's going to be a tendency not to. Uh, so be very calm and be very um, good to the people in your home. I love you dearly, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.